Welcome to Hungry for More, the show where we're going to fill you up with great information. Uh, we hope to just uh, make your soul sing tonight. Uh, we're going to have on as a special guest, my good friend Guy Stevenson. Uh, many people know him as the Sheen Guy. Uh, other people know him as the great Sheen archaeologist because he digs up these beautiful Sheen gems. And you'll see him all over Facebook. He does many quotes of Sheen. And uh, so tonight we're just going to talk about Bishop Sheen his effect on society, his effect on not only my life, but Guy's life and thousands of others. So uh, stay with us, please. It's going to be a great show. And of course, uh, speaking of Sheen, you know, this this Facebook phenomena, and I don't think it's a phenomenon anymore. It's kind of a, it's with us. It's with us. It is a tool of evangelization. Uh, of course, all the Holy Fathers are really asking us to engage the culture through social media. And so today we're going to show you I'll give you a few insights to not be afraid and to do this. And I want to congratulate my good friend, Julie Enzenberger, who is the person behind the Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Facebook page. And I think many of us are uh, liking the page. They have 350,000 likes now. And so uh, bravo. That is a great, uh, great number. And, you know, I think to everyone that's got, you know, their little Facebook page with 100 likes, or 200 likes, or maybe a thousand likes. You know, we all want to be, you know, like the big guys one day. But of course, it just takes dedication and commitment. And if you have that diligence to do something every day, to do great research, the numbers will come. Remember that everybody starts with one like, and that's usually you. It starts with you, <laughs> and then you invite your friends, and you continue to post. So again, congratulations to the official Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen page. Uh, and of course, there's another page that I love. It's called the Catholic Church. And of course, it's got 1.8 million likes. And so again, the uh, person who runs that page, I won't uh, disclose the name, but every day, adding pictures, meditations, you have to be faithful, have to continue. And it will share uh, it will continue to share and grow. And so be encouraged. You know, these little things we want to give up on, it's going nowhere. Well, you know, the thing about the Internet, it can go viral. So that one little post you have, we've seen it time and time again, it can go viral. And so trust in God. He will take something very simple and make it tenfold, a hundredfold. So no, uh, don't give up. Don't give up. So I thought I'd bring on to the show, of course, our good friend Guy Stevenson, all the way from Iowa, you know. <laughs> now, I'm here in Canada, of course. We, we're still digging out of the snow. It's uh, the middle of November. And, of course, in Iowa, we just we never know in the States uh, what the weather can be. Buffalo, of course, is still uh, shoveling out of eight feet of snow. And uh, But, again, it's one thing what we are. We are a global movement. Of course, we, we try to go all over the, the globe and find great guests. And so tonight, of course, I want to bring into the studio Guy <clears throat> Stevenson, all the way from Iowa. Welcome to the show, Guy. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Alan, so much. And it is just a pleasure and actually an honor to be here, especially on this new technology. I mean, I, I'm very excited about the way the church can move now within these uh, these new advances in communication, um, just like the Facebook, and for little or no cost. So thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. And it looks like you're fighting a bit of a cold there. I heard you sneeze, and I was going to say, bless you, bless you. But, uh, you know, so you're allowed. It's this... We need St. Believes today. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's the cold and flu season. Remember, take your vitamin C and do that. Uh, you know, Guy, these, these bios that I... I have on my guests, you know, I can spend 10 minutes uh, just reading your bio and how you, of course, journeyed uh, from high school to college and all these things. But maybe uh, just spend a few moments <clears throat> with our viewers here and introduce yourself and uh, maybe start it off a little bit. Just, again, why you love Fulton Sheen and, you know, how you got to this point. We all have that moment where we encounter him. But, again, give us a little bit. Get us, help us to know Guy Stevenson. Well, you know, before I get started, I too would like to acknowledge, as Sheen used to do on all of his programs, at least in the early years, is uh, G the JMJ, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So I too would like to acknowledge that that Mother Mary faithfully guide us uh, to your son and uh, use us as an instrument today. And uh, I, One of your opening remarks was the new, new technology. I think this is important because it has to do with 
how, who we acknowledge these nameless people that are helping to propagate the faith. They're actually servants of the faith. And again, I kudos to Julie Enzenberger, uh, people that are on Facebook, like the quotable fault machine. Um, you yourself, Alan, um, the, the tremendous work you're doing through faith ministries and, and uh, for the cause and getting out on your, you've got feet on the ground with propagating the sheen and for the cause and things. And Kent is running the back room and others. Um, you know, if, if there's a prayer that we need today, it's the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So Lord, please send us more laborers. Um, so that, that's, that just kind of goes along with that intro that you mentioned there. And I heartily say, God love you to everybody that's that's working as silently or actively as they can in, in trying to convert and to uh, save souls. And before I start with who I am, again, I'd, I'd probably like to thank those that have helped me get here. Besides my family, to the specific sheen information, I'd like to thank those those servants of justice, as I call them, or justice-based servants, and those are uh, Dr. Curlin, uh, Michael Graney, Don Brohan, uh, my Sheen Project Assistant Manager, Gina Casey, and all those at CESJ. I mean, act, as active as I am, these people are doing things which kind of tends you to believe that anybody can participate in advancing a great idea or a great cause. So that's, that's, that's enough for the introduction. Um, I could take this introduction of who I am in two different facets, either a personal or a professional. And frankly, the, you know, the personal is probably more important, um, but to some degree it's not as important as the uh, professional side of the equation. Personally, I, I came, I was a convert in 1982. Um, in fact, it was August 2nd, 1982, through what's called, some of the viewers might know what the movement was called. It was called a Curseal movement. And I had the fortunate benefit of uh, doing it at St. Mary's in Peoria, Illinois. Um, that was at the Spalding Center. Um, that was my first exposure as a non-Catholic to uh, Fulton Sheen. Uh, the, in 1982, keeping in mind that he died in 1979, his works and his uh, prolific uh, example had not really set into the to the people or the laity. So anyway, to, to make a long story short, that was my first exposure to Sheen, and that was some 30 years plus ago. And uh, my real step towards Fulton Sheen really occurred uh, almost 10 years ago when I personally, professionally wrote a paper called The Conundrum of Social Security, and I sent it to uh, several economists, uh, Walter Williams, uh, Rob, Dr. Robert Ashford, and um, it finally ended up the paper on Dr. Norm Curlin's desk, and I called him and asked him what he thought of it, make a long story short, and there's a Sheen story in this, but uh, he said that he wrote a book called Saving Social Security with a Just Free Market System. And so I picked up the book, read it, had conversations with him, and I became immediately convinced that she not only did Dr. Curlin have something, but that uh, their, their library was full of information to which he introduced me to Fulton J. Sheen. I shared with him my faith and my background personally and he introduced me to a piece that Sheen wrote back in 1950 called The New Slavery. And that, uh, that convinced me that my hunger for more uh, had just begun. And I've been on a trail since, like I said, almost 10 years ago, trying to discover um, more about the economics side and economic philosophy of this wonderful and brilliant man, Fulton J. Sheen, and as you know, it finally culminated itself last year in November with this book, Freedom Under God. And in there, we discovered some very important principles of economic policy. Um, but that 
once you read Sheen, you're not only getting a flavor of the philosophy, you're not only getting a flavor of, of, of the purpose of life, you're getting a flavor of the spiritual side. And so, and as he refers to it, every facet of and every sphere of human activity, he literally covered. So that was my initial, if you will, introduction to Sheen. Um, why am I here? Because I'm a, um, um, I, I, I'm just so turned on and in love with the man and his ideas. He approached me from a male ego standpoint with the, uh, with the ideas of reason. And that was his first book, as you might remember, it was 1925. And it was also not necessarily a book so much as it was his doctoral thesis. And that book, to put it on the shelf, uh, it's top shelf. It's very high up there for people to understand, to let alone read it. And that was his doctoral thesis when he attended Larbain uh, in France. And that, uh, that book was a difficult read. Um, but nonetheless, um, Gene entered into the, the, my psychic and understanding on a different level because of his uh, reason. And the subtitle of that book, God and Intelligence, by the way, is the philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas. So Sheen, not, not, you know, we, we can say that we adore and love Sheen, but he also adored and loved the saints. And literally every piece that he's written has given some acknowledgement to either Aquinas or Augustine. Uh, when I'm thinking about the, the list of books that he has, he has written, it's just so numerous. There's My count is there's approximately 70 books, but he's written several pamphlets, um, all of the which are very hard to get right now. <clears throat> and um, he's also written thousands of articles in syndicated newspapers. And we can talk about that later when we talk about um, when we discuss what I call the three phases of Sheen's adult life, um, because there definitely there's a distinction with not only his writing but the work that he was doing on, in his aptly titled "Propagation of the Faith." So again, that I, that's as much as I can tell you. I'm a, I'm a financial advisor by trade and investment representative, and I'm licensed in virtually every securities product. I handle pension plans for businesses, small businesses, and I've worked with people from the cradle to the grave uh, in counseling them. And I think you mentioned earlier about the three rules that I have about the greatest. People will come to me and they'll say, well, Guy, what's, what's the best investment that I can get into? And I'm sitting, the best investment that anybody can ever make, bar none, is the one they make in themselves. So again, you know, maybe that relates to Sheen, maybe that relates to your family, maybe that relates to your to your church. But investing, putting time and energy, and even reading is an investment. Literally, the second question that I and rule that I confirm with people is the greatest asset. Well, what is the greatest asset? Well, your greatest asset is your ability to earn an income, to to sustain yourself and your family. So the purpose of investing in yourself is fulfilled when you can find assets that produce an income for you. And being that I'm also a disciple of binary economics, there are basically two fashions that one can do that, through their labor or through their capital. And it's what we call binary economics in the simplest, uh, novice way. And then the third principle or third rule that I abide by is people don't plan to fail. They just simply fail to plan. And so that's, that's a little bit about my personality, my profile, about uh, who I are, who I am, and where I come from. I mentioned, maybe I didn't mention to you, but I've been married for 39, going on 40 years with my wife, Jan. She's a youth minister and has been. Uh, a youth minister as long as I've been a financial advisor. We have three children, um, all married, and we've got six grandchildren with one more on the way, God willing, one more on the way. Um, my, I mentioned to you in personal conversations that uh, uh, my parents are Arlene and Steve Stevenson, and my mom passed away on July 17th this year. 
So there's also a, a, a big load or he- heavy heart, if you will, uh, because of my mother's passing away. So that's that's just a little bit about uh, who I am. Um, you know what what my heart really tells me is that. The, the thing and why I'm so enthused and excited about Fault and Sheen and others are because this has been a long journey for us, particularly with this, this again, this book, um, is that w- we discovered within Sheen's writing three principles that have not only with the book have been abandoned, but in our culture have been abandoned. And those three principles, we just, dis- we discovered them again in some of our other uh, mentors or founders, uh, Lewis Kelso being one, he also identified three principles that have been lax in our culture. And they're simply the input-output principles of business. Or, but philosophically or morally, Sheen hit the nail on the head when he talks about uh, property, private property ownership, responsibility, how they're, how they're connected to personality, and the perfection of personality um, in each and every person. But again, and, and property, is, uh, to quote Sheen, is the economic guarantee of human liberty. And the reason that some of us find ourselves in such chaos in this world today is because we have forgotten those first principles, those first things, um, and how they relate to the person, not to materialism, but to the person. So anyway, that, that's just a little bit about what uh, what's on my heart. Uh, and again, that's why I put so much energy into the book. Um, just a little bit about the book is it did uh, did come out last year in November. Actually, it came out in Labor Day of last 2013. And the only place you can literally get it is through bulk sales or through Amazon or Barnes & Nobles. Um, as you know, it costs a lot of money to get an old book republished. But we're, make, we're making headway, and that's encouraging. And the more people that um, we can postulate to read Sheen, to understand Sheen, um, I, I think is going to be a ben- beneficial to not only us, but as we said yesterday, I, I think it's going to affect the generations, our posterity. So, again, that's, that's enough about who I am and what's on my heart. Um, any questions? <laughs> Yeah. No, and you know, it's uh, we could listen because I think you come at it with a little bit different angle. You know, I've traveled the country, of course, this great mass of we call it Canada. Of course, it's the we look down on Americans, not we look down on them. We just we're yeah. there, but, but we are the second largest uh, country in the world. You know, it's we got a lot of land to cover, and so I've gone from coast to coast uh, sharing sheen over the years. And you know, everyone will come to me and they'll say. You know, I love his videos. You know, they all see him on EWTN. They, they may have uh, recalled seeing him as a child with the parents sitting around the television and enjoying him that way. And, and many people have listened to his audio cassettes and his, his presentations. But the best conversations I have sometimes are with the people who have read his books, read his books. And there's something about reading books that is a different uh, experience, but it just somehow stays with you. It's almost a deeper intimacy with Sheen. To listen to him is great. He he converts us. He teaches us. But to read him is very powerful, very powerful. And so maybe we can spend time uh, just for the few moments to talk about his books. I know I have my favorites. You have your favorites. Um, but that experience of reading him, I've probably read, you know, 20, 30 of his books and uh, everyone has, every one of them has its uniqueness, its, uh, personality almost. I, I liken Sheen as a doctor and, you know, of course our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the mighty physician, but Sheen being this doctor many times writes the prescription mm-hmm. for the thing that ails society. And so he just takes these books and he, um, you know, for marriage, he would say, well, here's my scripture three to get married. Read this. This will help you have a healthy marriage. Uh, Peace of soul. I'm going to write this, follow this book. And, you know, you'll, it is the medicine for the soul. And so this great doctor who is in Sheen, of course, not only is he a 
I want to say this doctor, but he has many doctorates too, of course. Uh, but still, he seemed to have a pulse for what was going on in society. Of course, when he went to Levain University, he went with that burning to question to say, what are people thinking? What are they thinking? And so then he wrote accordingly. And so they're just masterpieces. And you follow his, you know, 66, 70 books. You see he is touching society where they're at. But so I can talk for an hour about how the books have affected me. You can talk for an hour, but maybe just a few notes uh, about some of the books you've read and how they've touched you. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. And God rest my, my mother, but she had, uh, um, when we were putting the eulogy together, um, you know, the service for my mother that just passed away, it was amazing because she was she suffered from cancer for nine years and she was in a hospice care and we spent months and months by her bedside reading to her and I, I took a couple books Sheen's book down um, the hound of heaven I read to her um, and a few other things but we asked her she said mom what was your favorite book of the Bible you know so maybe we can in remembering you we can say well she's this you know, we can pass that on to our kids and our grandchildren. And she said to me, and I think this is very apropos, what year? Because with Sheen, it seems to me when you're, when you're hungry for, for um, more or hungry for truth, it's which year are you in that you're digesting that? Because it, it, I think sometimes maybe it's the Holy Spirit. I personally believe it is. But he's guiding us through this journey, and it's all of a sudden these all of a sudden the light bulb goes off, and it's like, oh my goodness, that's exactly what he was talking about in 1938 or 1940 or 1956. So I get, when I when I read Sheen, um, it's important for the for the material, but it's important to understand that he he had a lifeline as well, and he if you ask Sheen what was the most important book that he wrote. You know, he, as those were his children, he probably he probably couldn't give you a straight answer he, because he can remember the brilliance of God and intelligence, um, the peace of soul. You know, we could say, well, that was a bestseller. The Life of Christ uh, was another monumental piece that he wrote. But that was, you know, that Life of Christ is interesting because there was some trials and suffering that you can read in the introduction that Sheen was going through. So when you're thirsty and you say, geez, what was he going through? Can that relate to my life? So I, I frankly think the most encouraging thing we can do um, as just trying to propagate the faith is to introduce people in whatever venue we can to read Sheen. And the, the, most, the simplest one that hits the broad brush of our culture is this book here on being human. And... It's, it's the type of, if you can get it up, I think I got this copy here for less than a dollar um, because it went to paperback. You can buy, you could go to eBay or you can go to Amazon um, and try to purchase it through them, but you, you might not be able to, get, you, they, you might be paying too much for it. But you can go to your old used bookstore or you can call a bookstore and say, gee, I'm trying to get a copy of those things there. Um, but that this book here on being human is the simplest book for somebody to pick up because you don't have to read it cover to cover. You can go through any chapter. You can go through just, it's, a, it's almost like a reflections of the day if you want. But if you're really looking for something specific, you can go and say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grieving. What does Sheen say about grief? Um, this is also where you find that new slavery at. Uh, if, if you're in a, a holiday season, he's got, eight different parts in there about Easter and Christmas and doesn't have anything on Thanksgiving. Then we'll talk about that later, but he does have, you know, points that people are very easily drawn to. You can read three pages, put it down and you, and you can just let it, you can let it ferment in your personality. And if you don't like it, fine, go on to something else, go, go to something else uh, and read it. Um, but because he, he wrote so much, um, I, I don't know how Rome was able to digest all of Sheen's writing because some of it is even being discovered again, um, anew. And 
this this kind of relates to the question of technology. I mean, books and newspapers are most the has been way of communicating. Tele, television through the internet, Facebook, social media. Most people are getting their news and information right through those that technology, right through this computer screen. So I, you know, and that's probably why I've taken to the internet and social media and put so much of Sheen's up there. And the responses that I get, rarely do I get agitation or people that are just completely um, against Sheen, although the, we know they exist. But most of the people are, are thanking me and, and saying thank you. That really is pertinent. And from, right now, it's just like a little morsel. You know, and when Sheen talks about how to read a book, which I think he got from the philosopher Mortimer Adler, who coined the book, How to Read a Book, and he also did the great books um, series, and he was the editor for Britannica. That's, again, Mortimer Adler. But Sheen took on the same kind of uh, auspices as uh, Mortimer Adler with his idea how to read a book. And he said, you take... You, you take a little sample. You just take a little bit and put it in, put it in and see if it's palatable. If it's not palatable, spit it out and find something else. But if it is palatable, then take the next bite and digest it. In other words, you might comb through a book and find something that's relevant to you or, boy, that's, that's interesting. I'll tell you another thing about Sheen, though, is usually within the first chapter or the second chapter, He's telling you what the purpose of why he wrote these books. Um, and I've got a quote later on that I'll be happy to read about freedom under God, what his purpose was. But he quite clearly states that, look, at if, if an author doesn't know what the purpose of their book is, get rid of it because it's going to be garbage. It's just like that the food that we take in that's got all kinds of contaminants or, or um, it's, it's not nutritional. But she, Sheen does a great way of trying to develop our personality through reading and understanding and, through, and as we know through prayer um, so that that that's as much as I can say about his books the other, the other if you're more of a, a philosopher or you want the reason type um, his second book was the um, religion without God and in the preface, he says that it's a compendium to his first book, God and Intelligence. Well, how can you read one without reading the other if you're going to, if you're going to be in that vein? Um, for those that are in the academia world, I would strongly recommend that the first book you, you want to read is God and Intelligence because in there he states his philosophy of reason. And when I get confused about something that Sheen reads, I have to go back to that first book because there he's setting up the premise and foundation, the substance of what he's writing later on in life. Uh, if you go through life and all you did was read Fault and Sheen and never read those first books, you're going to be missing a key component of the foundation of his philosophy. So anyway, the, or, or you could read um, The Philosophy of a Religion. He wrote, he wrote a lot of books that are what I would call unscripted because they weren't telecast on Catholic radio. Um, they weren't written about in the newspapers. They were actual doctorate material, in my opinion. So, and there's there's a handful of those books. Um, but anyway, that that's the, the books. the The idea of, of Sheen's books. I mean, they're so vast because it, it depends on where each person is. You mentioned earlier, um, three to get married. That's a profound book. Um, but when does somebody and when and who introduces you to that book? You know, you can just say, "Why well, circumstance? I happened upon it." But somebody needs to give you a morsel, a piece of the action with respect to what he's talking about there. And yes. that's Alan. I, you, it might be true with you, but that's what I found out is once I get a little piece, I hunger for more. And that's sure. why your your show is so appropriate. Because you, you get a little piece of sheen, and, you, and you, you take him along with you into prayer, or you take take his uh, um, take his take his reflections seriously, and they cannot help but strengthen you internally 
so that you can be more persuasive outwardly. Yes. And I think what I try to say to people and that, you know, there is this, uh, this thing that happens to your soul when you read his books, but it's using him as what I'd like to call the visiting parish priest who comes in, uh, meets you, gives a reflection, and then you want more. I, I think of that little book, um, the wartime prayer book. Wartime prayer book. And we've, you know, I know that there's hundreds of thousands of copies that have put into, been put into soldiers' hands, uh, you know, just people who serve not only in the U.S. military, but in Canada and throughout the world. And, but it's a book that's ending up in the lay person's pocket. I know I have it in my, in my work truck. I have it in my, you know, here on my desk. I have it uh, in the, my little prayer room. It's this way that Queen had of just bringing the soul to our Lord, to the meditations about Our Lady, about the Eucharist. It just, and that's what he does. He was always a priest, always someone trying to minister and bring souls to Christ. And here at Fiat Ministries, it's all about getting people to say yes to Jesus Christ. And, and so, again, just with the books and, you know, these little Facebook um, moments that we will talk about later in the show about these little samples to get them to finally say, I've read about 20 samples. Now I want to read a whole book. And this is what we find is that, you know, it's hard to recommend that book. I mean, I have my favorites. I always hand people uh, Victory Over Vice. Mm -hmm. It's talk so as I always say to people well what do you want you know they come to the table they come to the table and I say what are you looking for and you know to the newlywed couple or whatever over here three to get married but I usually say well I, I want to give you victory or advice I think I have it here um, this it looks like this uh, simple little book 1929 and I said do you have a sin problem do you have a problem with sin and they all go oh yeah yeah I got a problem with sin oh the seven deadly sins right and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, this is the antidote for the seven deadly sins. And it's, it's basically the seven last words our Lord spoke on the cross. Mm -hmm. And he applies it to each of the seven deadly sins. But so that's my favorite. And I recommend it. But, you know, I think Mother Teresa was on record to say that Life of Christ was her favorite book and that she carried it with her at all times. And they asked the Venerable Sheen of what his favorite book was, and he mentioned that his favorite book of all the ones he wrote was The World's First Love. It was his yeah. book on Our Lady. And that, he said many, many times, was his favorite book to write and to share because it talks about so many things, The World's First Love. So these are things I try to recommend. Victory of Vice, Life of Christ, mm -hmm. The World's First Love, mm -hmm. And then, of course, if they got if they're not already uh, in love with Sheen, then I'll say peace of soul, and and keep going through. But your your recommend a recommendation on being human is a great book because it's something they can read a few pages and then put it down, and and that's the hard thing about Sheen. I always say to people, yeah, you're gonna have to give this time. You can't read him in a weekend. You have to read five pages, put it down, and just you know, take it in. It's, he's that powerful. He's that good. Yeah. Um, now, I know that you wanted to share a little bit about what you see as the three phases of Sheen's life, because and I think you've been following his books and you're seeing these time periods, these timelines. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can uh, you know, share a little bit with that. And, uh, you know, of course, we have a half hour's gone already and we're going. And I know we'll have you back. If we run out, I, there's lots to talk about. So don't worry. We'll bring you back a second time. I know we always have to be on schedule here. It's TV. So, uh, you know, we'll have to have a commercial a bit later and uh, we'll have to wrap it up within the hour. But still, I think, I think not only do I want to hear about these three phases, but I know the listeners and the viewers. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's listening on iTunes. Uh, through this program, of course, YouTube, Gloria TV, uh, the many ways we promote this. Uh, you can maybe be watching us on a rerun, uh, but still, thanks for tuning in. And uh, Guy, please please share with us this uh, idea that you talk about three themes in Sheen's life. Well, you know, the, it, you can take a reflection off of Sheen's writings, and, and you can also take a reflection off his ex presence in the 
television um, through Life is Worth Living. Then you can also take a reflection on Sheen with his missions work. Um, he got a lot of exposure. So I, I kind of decided that, and this is just my idea, that there are three distinct phases. And the first phase at, from Sheen of, as an adult. Um, the first phase, I, I'm referring to it as a teacher. And he, he, the tools that he used as a teacher was he was um, doctor of philosophy at the Catholic University of America. That's where he got his substance from is, as a teacher. And then he, the other tools that he had was at the Catholic Hour Radio, which started about 1930. So this time frame might be overlapping between the two phases or the three phases, but they're you can almost draw a distinction with his writing materials and say something was going on from his perspective as a teacher, because literally his works are, are teaching, you're, you're learning, you're absorbing new, and you're questioning new ideas that Sheen has thought about to the point where he wrote them down in paper. This, and that's when you, you might also say that's when he started uh, the syndicated newspapers with Monsignor Sheen writes. Um, and the time frame was roughly between 1925 and 1950. And it's the a latter part of that is including what I think was a very um, troubling time because of the world in chaos was what we call the war years. I mean, the communism was very big in Sheen's uh, vernacular and very outspoken proponent. I mean, he was totally against every, I, he found it in our seminaries. He found he went to the Senate Capitol hearings and he testified uh, as to what the definition was of communism. And he actually wrote the, read the articles of the Constitution of Soviet Russia. And the, po the point that I'm trying to make is Sheen was an expert in that area. And I think there was culturally some pressure either put on him uh, personally or, or, or in, in his vocation because that was the war years and Russia were our, was our allies. Um, so, and, and I, I don't need to conjecture, but my point is that he was a teacher and at the end of that phase, then it became a little bit more political, if you will, it became a little bit more um, agitating for those that were following Sheen in the newspaper and his writing. And something transitioned then because in, in about 1951, he became Bishop, if you remember. And the, the phase two is what I refer to as world evangelizer. He also picked up the television, Life is Worth Living series. And then from 61 to 68, it's the Sheen program. So there was e even a change in the venue there. Um, and he was working for the Society for the Propagation of the Faith. Um, then all of a sudden, war occurs again, the Vietnam War. And Sheen was totally... A, I don't know if he worked into it, but he amplified the just war theory, and he also was against the Vietnam War. And that that disturbed a lot, a lot of the political people, including his Cardinal uh, Spellman. Um, and I think that there was probably some type of, uh, look, at, you spoke out adamantly against the communism and they were our allies, and now you're going up against us and saying nothing about Vietnam. So that those are the that's a rough outline, if you will, Alan, about the two the first two phases. The third phase is, and, and I've done a lot of reflection on it, and it has it actually is paraphrasing from his book, Freedom Under God, and I call I simply call the phase three, the flowering of the perfection of personality in and under God. I can vividly see a sense from that 66, 67 time frame that his personality started to, I mean, it, it really doesn't flower completely until you're in heaven. But the Sheen, when Sheen was talking about, to quote him again, the flowering of perfection of personality, back in 1938, it just comes full cycle that he is living his own prophecy. He's actually coming out and blossoming and for those people that have read and studied his material and have prayed about the, the, the ideas and the concepts that he conveys, 
it becomes even more of a vivid flower. It's almost like that rose again. Um, but anyway, those, those, that's the, th the three phases. And I think the third phase is continuing because we know we can now call him venerable. We can't take that away from him. It's just like his degree, his doctor's degree from Lorbain, the highest honor that they, they've only given that honor to 40 individuals in the history of that old academia institution. And all of a sudden the church comes out and marks him as venerable. And that's something that I think we can take pride in. And I wish you'd share with the listeners what you shared with me yesterday about what that venerable means, literally for anybody that's reading his material. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's such a powerful title when you think you think of venerable veneration but when you translate it, it is worthy of imitation so it's worthy of imitation when the holy father declared sheen venerable back in 2012 it was a time where he was saying to the world imitate this man imitate this man and his heroic virtue, his love of the church, his love of God's people, and that his writings then were also given the stamp of approval, the official. I always say to people when I give them a Bishop Sheen book, this is church approved. Not only does it have an imprimatur and a Neil Albestat, mm -hmm. it also has the church's stamp of approval, venerable, that this is worthy of imitation, worthy of looking at it, worthy of meditating on it. And so it is a high honor, a very high, higher than any of his doctorates. So that title of venerable that the church gives not to too many people. Many have come, but again, few have been given that designation. And of course, very well deserving. You look at his volume of work and his ministry to the world, and not just to the church, but to the world, and how you know bishops and cardinals from all over the world wrote to the Vatican giving testimony of that they're still talking about him. He may have visited in 1950 or 1960, mm -hmm. but the money that he raised built up, you know, leposariums, uh, different uh, schools and hospitals. They're still there and they're still uh, just loving the, I want to say the afterglow, mm -hmm. but the locations that came to uh, not only in Africa, but throughout the world. Uh, so again, this, imitation of this title venerable is so powerful and we thank pope benedict uh, of course for declaring him mm -hmm. venerable back in 2012 and of course his cause you know is his journey to sainthood i think literally the world has already elevated him to sainthood but mm -hmm. uh, again the church in her time it's god's time that's right decide that so i think you know it's time for a commercial <laughs> i don't have to say this but we've been on a road here a roll here so what i think we do is let's let's play one of your uh videos that you've posted to your youtube um page that you have guy stevenson has his own youtube page and this one isn't called is innocence penitence and priesthood of course a great meditation from sheen and you've put a few pictures onto this uh, video very powerful little two-minute uh, segment and then we'll share words from our sponsors verbum software and um, catechismclass.com we need to learn the catechism so uh, of course and they are great lovers of sheen at catechism catechismclass.com try to say that five times fast <laughs> and we'll do that so we'll be right back here on hungry for more with our guest guy stevenson And then the cross is lifted slowly off the ground, wavers for a moment in midair, and then with a thud, falls into the ground. The divine preacher has mounted his pulpit for the last time. Like all preachers, he o'erlooks his audience. Way off in the distance, he can see the gilded roof of the temple reflecting its rays against the sun, which is soon to hide its face in shame. 
Here and there on the temple walls, he can catch the glimpses of figures straining their eyes to catch the last view of him whom the darkness knew not. And there were soldiers shaking dice for the garments of a god. And there at the foot of the cross was that broken flower, that wounded thing. Magdalene, forgiven because she loved much. And there with a face like a cast molded out of love was John. And there, God pity her, his own mother. Mary Magdalene John. Innocence, penitence, and priesthood. The three types of souls forever to be found beneath the cross of Christ. online Roman Catholic Catechism course provider. Founded in March 2004 by Father James Adelava, CatechismClass.com has been providing adult and children's faith formation, sacramental preparation, and spiritual enrichment courses to thousands of individuals from the United States and abroad in over 25 nations. Catechism Class provides the highest quality online learning for Catholics. Endorsed by His Holiness Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, Cardinal Dolan, Cardinal Burke, Archbishop Chaput, Bishop Robert Vasa, Dr. Scott Hahn, and others, we are entirely faithful to the magisterium of the Holy Church. CatechismClass.com operates with the singular goal of being the best online Catholic catechesis program in the world. In the words of the Holy Apostle Paul, and how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? CatechismClass.com's mission is one to save souls for Christ and make our students aware of the beauty and treasure that is in the Catholic tradition. With more than just words, our lessons incorporate beautiful and transcendent art, traditional music, ancient prayers, engaging activities, interactive quizzes, and strong Catholic doctrine. Please join us as we embark on a journey in faith formation that will leave everyone, even lifelong Catholics, better educated in their faith. Join us. We are CatechismClass.com. Hello and welcome back to Hungry for More. And uh, wow, we, we're getting away on the time here. Uh, of course, great. Uh, I, I can't thank uh, catechismclass.com uh, for coming in a few weeks ago to Hungry for More and talking about catechism. Actually, it is the highest view show I have on Gloria TV. Uh, everybody wants to know about the catechism. So uh, again, to Matthew Plise, thank you for coming on the show a few weeks ago. And I tell you, people are hungry for the catechism. So I want to just tell you that. And of course, uh, Verbum, uh, the great software that I use every day. Uh, you know, I log my computer on, turn it on, and there's my daily readings. And of course, uh, I did a, a search where I put hungry uh, in there, and I had my many, many uh, Bible passages to, uh, to go from. Of course, I still have my favorite, uh, of course, from Matthew's Gospel that we'll end the show with today. But I have in the studio here Guy Stevenson. Uh, we like to call him the Sheen Guy. And uh, of course, project manager. He's a lot of titles, but I, I call him, he's officially called the archaeologist, okay? Because he just digs up Sheen gems. And, you know, our timing today is going to be that we're not going to really get be able to share how to do Facebook posts and how to make these beautiful images with the picture and the uh, things uh, that, of the many Sheen gems with them. Uh, because we got, you know, just talking about his books and talking about, of course, these three phases of his life and 
uh, just sh sharing in a sentimental way how uh, sometimes he brings us to tears. You know, I, I know a guy you were sharing about your mother and uh, reading to her in her final days, Sheen, um, and the comfort that she had hearing those words. And, you know, he's done that time and time again. And so, uh, you know, this, I think we'll continue and just finish off our show with a few more reflections about what you're feeling about these three phages and any other things that uh, his books, how they touched you and uh, not only changed your life, but literally those lives of your family members and, and colleagues that you've come in contact with over the years. So I'll leave it uh, with you, Guy, to give us a few of your final comments. Okay. Well, again, I just, I just want to thank you and everybody that's behind you, Alan, for, for what you're doing. The three phases that I, that you can draw a complete distinction between the technology advances in each one of those phases. In 1925, if you can just phantom what our country is, John Wayne hadn't even come and do, doing movies yet. Um, you know, 1934 time frame, uh, th things were not evolved like they are today. So it's hard for people to put themselves in place. And then, and then when you can imagine what life must have been like in 1925 and 1930 to 1950, I wasn't even born yet. So. So, so Sheen has got a whole new generation of people that need to be exposed to this this philosophy, his, uh, his, his mission of purpose of life, and the perfection of personality. All of those things, you can draw a distinct uh, correlation with this, this timetable, if you will, because the technologies are so important. This is how I want to end it, though. The technology is, it's changing again. We're going through another... Uh, Murphy's Law, where daily the technology is changing. And so if we are going to be moving the church forward as lay people, we have to embrace this technology. I mean, it can be as simple, Alan, as if somebody does join Facebook, and I mean, I, I understand you might be apprehensive because you fear this technology or you fear the information age that's there. It's as simple as responding to a like or to a share, or I would encourage you to go to my photo, photo library, and you can go through four years of those graphic photos that just pull out a, a gem of sheen, and you can read it. I've got, last count, almost a thousand of them in there. And then you can go to other sources. You can go to uh, your page, or Hunger for More, which we've been transferring that some of the information there as you said but I, th I think the whole from the beginning of this program to the end of it not only the books but we have to move that that thought that essence that perfection of personality that sheen was and we have to bring it into the new age of technology um, and that's that's again one of the reasons why this book here is so important because it was a lost manuscript and it's been brought to date uh, it was written, actually, it was first spoke about in a public address in 1938. Uh, very relevant there. And there's all kinds of background information on that, but we, we can leave that for another program. But the technology has changed, and we have to move with it. Yes. And, of course, it's an easy name to remember, Guy Stevenson. And I know you, I think you, you're a number one contributor to about 10 different Facebook pages. And, uh, you know, you're constantly contributing to uh, Fix the Family, Verbatim, uh, Catholic Facebook Friends. There's a big list, a list this long. But, uh, you know, again, uh, when you talked about your your stash, call it your stash, but mm -hmm. these thousand pictures of, with little quotes and beautiful pictures, it's these shares. I mean, when we see people and you see a thousand shares, what a great way to share the gospel and to bring people to this awareness that God loves them. And this is what Sheen did so well. He told us that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. This beautiful uh, testimony that our God cares and that God has a plan for every one of us. And so Sheen did a beautiful job and continues to do that with his legacy that he left behind. And so I thank you for sharing his beautiful Sheen gems with everyone on Facebook, and not just Facebook, but Twitter and YouTube. And so we ask God to continue to bless you in your apostolate. Now, we're going to have you back on in the new year. 
and we'll have a whole show just dedicated to how you do this. You know, I want to know your secrets. I want to know your secrets of how you create these beautiful postings. But also, too, uh, there is a way to find out a lot about, you know, finding these old articles, the Bishop Sheen speak, the Monsignor Sheen. So we're going to ask you to show us your archaeological techniques, how to dig up these old Sheen masterpieces. And oh, there is... Yeah, so we're going to do that. So anyway, so uh, of course, we encourage you to tell a friend. We're excited. We're going to be on Roku, uh, all that technology, you know, we're going to be able to plug in. And of course, you'll watch us on the big 56-inch screen TV that you're going to get for Thanksgiving, right? So, and of course, want to wish everyone a happy American Thanksgiving. Uh, Canada, we had one about a month ago, and we were still enjoying. We're glad we get to share with you the American Thanksgiving. So uh, God love you all of America and may you have a blessed Thanksgiving. And of course, love to end our program with that powerful scripture verse, one of my favorites. And it comes from this book. This book is not a Sheen book, but it's the Bible. Okay. So I think everybody read your Sheen, but read your Bible. And of course, it's Matthew's uh, great uh, reflection on blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. And so I hope that you've been satisfied with our reflections today on Hungry for More. And so until next week, stay hungry, stay holy. God love you, and we'll see you again and again. Happy Thanksgiving.